Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to discuss about uh, uh, a topic on uh, social pediatrics with a discussion um, lecture on the effects of climate change on the health of the children. So we can start with the statement from the uh, WHO, from the Bangkok statement, that we must address the threats of ch children's health from climate change because we hold our future in our hands and that is our children. So our lecture today will be divided into three parts, uh, magnitude of the problem, the effects on the children, and the role of the healthcare system. Uh, before we start with the uh, main topic, we'll uh, review uh, some of the most common terminologies in uh, the discussion of climate change. Uh, global warming is the increase in the Earth's average surface temperature from human-made greenhouse gas emissions, while climate change refers to the long-term changes in the Earth, uh, Earth's climate or region on Earth, and includes more than just the average surface temperature, like uh, variations in the amount of snow, sea level, sea ice, and uh, this can all be consequences of uh, climate change. Weather uh, refers to the atmospheric conditions in a short term, including changes in temperature, uh, humidity, cloudiness, the wind, visibility, while climate is the average of weather patterns over a longer period of time. Usually for Earth scientists, they measure it every 30 years or more. Uh, sea level rise uh, relates to climate change in two ways. Uh, uh, there's more uh, water uh, released in the ocean as glaciers and, la and land ice melts. And secondly, the ocean expands as ocean temperature increases. And both of these conse consequences of climate change are accelerating um, sea level rise around the world and putting millions of people in uh, at risk. So, okay, so for emissions, these are the uh, in the climate change space, these refer to greenhouse gases uh, released in the air and produced by numerous activities including uh, burning of fossil fuels, industrial agriculture, um, and these gases can cause heat to be trapped in the atmosphere, increasing the Earth's temperature over time. While greenhouse gas is a chemical compound found in the atmosphere, uh, most common is carbon dioxide, which is the primary greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gas driver. And um, uh, these gases allow much uh, of the solar radiation to enter the atmosphere. And when energy strikes the Earth and warms the surface, some of this energy is reflected back towards space as infrared radiation. But with the effect of greenhouse uh, uh, um, gases, uh, more of this heat uh, uh, is trapped inside the Earth's surface and in the inside the atmosphere. And then the more heat and then the warmer the Earth will become. So uh, the more, most common uh, greenhouse gas, as we can see in the diagram, is carbon dioxide followed by methane gas and nitrous oxide. And most of the uh, most common sources of these greenhouse gases are from energy supply, followed by industry and agriculture, the least from waste and waste uh, water, which is only 3%. So this is the diagram how greenhouse gases can warm the earth more. Uh, so with the greenhouse gas, um, like um, traps like um, uh, solar radiation in the earth, uh, Earth's atmosphere and the Earth's surface, causing um, like warmer climate, climate and um, um, other other uh, like um, side effects. So fossil fuels are sources of non-renewable energy formed from the remains of living organisms that were buried millions of years ago. And uh, as opposed to renewable energy, which comes from naturally uh, replenished sources such as the sunlight, wind, waves, and geothermal uh, heat. In 2014, only 28% 20, of the world's power uh, generating capacity comes from the uh, like a renewable energy, only enough to supply it, uh, almost twenty three percent of the global uh, of global electricity, and because renewables do not produce the greenhouse gases uh, driving the climate change, then um, uh, uh, the use of this uh, this can uh, contribute to a more sustainable planet for future generations. So, how heavy is this? Um, uh, what's the magnitude of this problem of climate change? So, climate change is now a reality. It is beyond the um, confusion and equivocation. Uh, as um, seen in this um, um, uh, graphs, the earth is warmer, the sea level is rising, ice is melting, and um, uh, the records in the past few decades prove that the earth is warmer and weather patterns are more extreme and less predictable now than in the pre-industrial times. So um, humans um, 
have always been for decades the major drivers of uh, the warming sea level, warming um, like uh, earth, the sea level rise, uh, ocean acidification, and change weather pattern, patterns of today. Uh, burning of fossil fuels and deforestation along with other greenhouse gases associated with agriculture and industry have rapidly changed the atm atmosphere, increasing the thermal blanket of the earth and warm the air and the oceans. So this is how it's uh, uh, like the increased um, atmospheric temperature, greenhouse gas, air temperature, and CO2 levels are affecting the, uh, the environment. So, and um, like, uh, and with this also health impacts, uh, um, like um, negative impacts on agriculture, forests, and water resources, coastal areas, and wildlife uh, diversity are also being uh, observed nowadays. And uh, for the specifically, uh, um, with regards to health, uh, the climate um, impacts um, usually includes uh, medical and physical changes in uh, medical and physical health. There is increased heat-related illnesses, uh, allergies, increased exposure to waterborne and vector-borne illnesses. And with mental health, there's increasing anxiety, stress, stress on social relationship, increasing incidence of substance abuse and post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, ACEs. And with community health, there is increased interpersonal aggression, violence, crime, social instability, and, com and decreased community cohesion. So, so like, and it has become the major uh, killer of, uh, um, uh, uh, one of the major global killers. Like, uh, each year, weather-related disasters can kill over 60,000 for the past few decades. Um, because of climate change, under the institution is killing uh, 3.5 million uh, humans, diarrhea is killing 2.2, and malaria uh, is killing about 900,000 per year. So, what are the effects of uh, climate change in children? So, the climate change is a powerful disease modifier. Uh, a warmer, less stable climate is changing patterns and severity of already existing conditions and diseases. So, we, uh, the most affected ones are people living in the developing world, those in extremes of ages, the poor and those with little education, undernourished, ill and disabled, and people living and working outside. And children are also disproportionately affected. In the newer studies, 93% of the global burden of disease from climate change falls on children under 15 years of age. And out of these, 88% of the global burden from climate change falls on children under 5. So why children? Because they are more vulnerable to diseases and illnesses due to their underdeveloped immune system. They face greater dangers from undernutrition and diarrheal diseases. Physiologically, they are still developing and um, face more dangers physically and cognitively to extreme weather and environmental factors. They are still socially and economically dependent on adults. Also, they will build, bear the brunt of climate change far longer than the adults um, because of their young age. And uh, poor children, as uh, previously mentioned, are more vulnerable. So this will be, and this is the ongoing scenario in the clinics now. Uh, this is an algorithm showing the uh, toxic impact of climate change on the uh, physical, social, and economic changes, uh, economic uh, um, environment of uh, children. And we will discuss this uh, in detail later. Uh, the effects will be divided into uh, three major parts, the primary effects or the direct impacts which uh, are attributable to heat waves and extreme weather events, the secondary effects or those mediated by ecosystem uh, changes and tertiary effects, those mediated by human uh, institution uh, changes. For the direct impacts, uh, heat-related mortality and morbidity are the most obvious of the direct health impacts from climate change. Uh, while death occurs primarily in elderly, a recent review found increased vulnerability in children as well. And um, uh, it has been um, seen that extreme weather events place children at risk for injury, loss of separation from caregivers, exposure to diseases, and uniquely high risk of mental uh, health con consequences, including PTSD, depression, and adjustment disorders. Disasters can also cause uh, harm to children through devastation of their homes and neighborhoods. Also, adverse birth income uh, outcomes, including preterm births and stillbirths, are increased with the greater ambient heat. Uh, child labor in agricultural and other outdoor, outdoor child labor areas and adolescent athletes are also special groups where heat stroke deaths have doubled in the past de decades. 
So again, why are they most uh, uh, why are children most heavily affected because uh, of their unique and different exposures? Usually, infants are confined and left in um, uh, seemingly safe places and overexposed to heat. Uh, they, uh, because of their immature thermal regulatory systems, they are more vulnerable. Uh, there is higher metabolic rate, increasing vulnerability to dehydration. They have longer lifetime to, de to develop uh, long latency diseases. And for pre ambulatory babies, they cannot remove themselves from heat. So, uh, and adolescents also are not recognizing danger, uh, making them more susceptible to this um, uh, harm. Uh, for the med uh, effects mediated through ecosystems, the more common uh, environmental factors driving this are air pollution, waste, pesticides, and deforestation. Uh, for air pollution, nor nearly 1 in 10 under 5 deaths is linked to air uh, pollution in Southeast Asia and Western Pacific region alone, more than 150,000, 55,000 under 5 deaths due to indoor and outdoor pollutions are seen respectively in 2012. It is also the leading risk factor for child death in many countries and globally, 7 million deaths are uh, um, uh, attributed to air pollution in 2013. So air quality can be reduced to uh, th through temperature associated elevations in the ground level ozone concentration, increasing increased pollen counts, longer allergy season duration, wild and wildfire smoke. All of these factors can exacerbate respiratory diseases, and especially asthma in children. This is how climate change, pollen, and asthma uh, like um, interact to like uh, increase this uh, severity of this episode. So with increased uh, temperature and atmospheric CO2, there is like uh, increased uh, like earlier pollen season and longer exposure to increased exposure to allergies, increased sensitization to allergies, leading to increased severity of asthma and other respiratory and, uh, episodes and increased uh, other increased frequency and prevalence. So. So again, uh, children are more vulnerable because of the physical location. They are lower to the ground and less mobile. Also, they have higher RR, so more exposure to uh, pollutants in air is possible. The lungs are still growing and developing until age of eight. And the central nervous system is still growing and developing. Also, allergen exposures and immature Im and immune uh, system contribute to their uh, vulnerability. Uh, for longer lifetimes, they have longer lifetime to develop uh, long latency diseases, and they are also dependent upon adults for protections, which sometimes adults cannot provide. So, uh, determining the for the infectious diseases, determining the effects of this is complex because of confounding contributions of economic development, land use, changing ecosystems, international travel, and uh, commerce. But currently, climate warming has been seen to uh, cause expansion of Lyme disease in North America, increase the burden of child diseases, especially in Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. Also, there is, uh, it has contributed to the increased climate links to emerging infections like oxidiodiomycosis and amoebic meningoencephalitis, and increased incidence in vector-borne illnesses like malaria, dengue, the emergence of Zika, uh, other tick-borne encephalitis, and other hemorrhagic fevers. Uh, the altered agricultural conditions also including in extreme heat, expanded uh, water demands, and increased severe weather events will affect uh, um, food availability in cost, and costs, uh, leading to child undernutrition and increased water and foodborne illnesses. Uh, the decreased protein, iron, and zinc content of certain major crops also has been demonstrated for plants grown under increased CO2 conditions, carrying significant implications for uh, child nutrition. So diarrhea is the most common uh, uh, manifestation of waterborne and foodborne infection, but the burden is disease of disease have increased to 1.7 billion cases annually, with 441,000 deaths under 5 annually. Um, again, uh, children are more vulnerable because of uh, in uh, the uh, 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 Unique and different exposures like the in utero exposure, exposure to maternal infection, the hand to mouth behaviors usually without hand washing causing more um, um, entry of uh, like um, germs. Uh, they are uh, also unrestricted diets. 
they uh, because of their uh, immature immune response they are more more vulnerable more prone to dehydration and there is limitation and antimicrobials due to age-related toxicities um, the children suffer that the, the effects mediated through human institutions. Children, the children's biological and cognitive development occurs within the context of uh, usually stable families, schools, neighborhoods, and communities. But unchecked climate change threatens the safety and well-being of children via effects on this broader social context. Um, uh, the more commonly affected ones are nutrition, occupation, mental health, and then um, mental health and uh, exposure to violence. Uh, what is the role of the healthcare system in the protection of the child from climate change? So, um, the WSO have uh, WHO have come up with adaptation and mitigation strategies to help us. For adaptation strategies, these are the policies that increase preparedness for climate associated changes, uh, which, because of past and ongoing uh, emissions, are inevitable. I quote that the present health status of a population may be the single most important predictor of both the future health impacts of climate change and the cost of adaptation. So um, we have a role in the direct patient care by optimizing immunization and access to care, uh, like um, education and the use of UV heat, uh, um, air quality indices, early warning system and responses, and in the identification of vulnerable, indi uh, vulnerable individuals in the practice. Also, we can work with local public officials to develop a local climate-related health risk profile, develop low toxicity vector programs, and improve disease reporting and surveillance. And in the community, uh, we can educate patients in the protection of drinking water supply and quality, support local agriculture, and develop broader partnerships and programs across sectors. And we have to focus uh, like uh, on children uh, by finding child-centered resources in the web or in books and uh, highlight some children's stories on uh, climate change effects. Uh, we can work with parents, teachers, and child care workers and develop anticipatory guidelines for the clinic and the uh, clinics and community. Uh, the impo uh, we have to empower the young people since they are the most um, uh, um, like the, uh, they are protagonists for change. And uh, these young people are well placed to contribute to the fight even now. Uh, they are adept at spreading new habits and technologies, and they are adaptable and can quickly make low carbon uh, lifestyles and career choices as part of their daily lives. Uh, uh, we can see this in the evidence of like uh, the rise of the number of like um, young uh, climate activists. The most uh, famous is Greta Thunberg. Uh, for the mitigation strategies, these are uh, policies to prevent the most severe effects of climate change through reduction in the greenhouse gas emissions. And what we do now as global society about greenhouse gas emissions, energy choices, land use, and population control will determine how much climate change will occur in the second half of the 21st century and beyond, which is the era, this is the era now of uh, climate options. Uh, the approaches to mitigation um, um, like um, can be um, like um, through personal choices we can calculate our carbon footprint this is how we uh, like this is a website that can calculate our own individual carbon carbon footprint um, Bahrain has some um, high carbon footprint of an average of 19 metric tons whereas the global carbon footprint is only 4.5 metric tons um, Practice choices matters by greening the clinics and healthcare institutions, by education and innovation. Also, it matters uh, like political choices matters uh, by educating uh, decision makers, advocating for policies and laws that can protect children's futures, and participating fully in the local political process. Uh, yeah, and enacting changes locally. Uh, we can find win-win choices like burning calories instead of carbon, uh, social time instead of screen time, uh, eating fresh, eating local, and eating lower on the food chain, uh, practicing energy efficiency uh, by promoting solar hot water and water conservation, adapting clean renewable energy over biomass use. Uh, mitigation strategies can feature the triple wins uh, and on the triple bottom line aim of climate change protection, which is uh, the aim is to have a sustainable planet, uh, a profitable economy, and healthy people. Um, 
I will end with the quote from the ex uh, from the former U.S. Secretary General, who said that this is the moral change of our generation. We cannot rob our children of their future. Thank you. Thank you.